desert, magnificent antelope, professional hunters and unforgettable adventure in Africa. All this will start in a moment, only in Eurohunters program. Today it's time for another hunt and another heroes of our Namibian soap opera. This time we went with our colleagues Karol and Jacek, who hunt with a descendant of Dutch colonialists Jacko. Passing animals looking for food, we are still impressed by the disaster that hit the country. And so Namibia, a country with few permanent water bodies, have lost all the larger ponds or even lakes due to a drought prevailing for the last two years. The water has simply disappeared, leaving behind a truly grim view. If during the next rainy season there's no intensive rainfall once again, we might witness a really big disaster. But potential danger also lurks above the eye level of hunters travelling by car. Protruding over the road, long branches full of thorns pose a serious danger especially to the eyes of hunters. You really need to be vigilant all the time. And we are slowly approaching the hunting spot. It seems to be getting busy. That's good. It's a sign that game sticks to the area. Therefore, we go to check the area from the above in no time. The phrase in no time was used for a reason. Hunting with Jacko quickly turned out to be an extremely fast hunting. Stalking was not stalking, but a brisk march towards the nearest rocky hill. Step aside, gentlemen. Jacko moves quickly in the area in order to utilize the element of surprise. And the element of surprise soon ceases to apply. So we must act quickly. Therefore, after a while, Jacek is ready to shoot. Everything indicates that the shot was very precise. The herd is not aware of the direction the danger came from and the second hunter will get his chance. He only needs to aim well and quickly. There's no time to hesitate while hunting with Jacko. His tactics are simple. Every time we find the highest point in the spot, which we climb to choose the right animal. This time we and the film crew were lucky as we could safely take a shot from rocks without much climbing. The gentleman satisfied with the hunt can't afford to spend much time on congratulating, as our prey attracts some unwanted company. We wait here, okay. we check if something else is coming. Okay. He takes the car okay. closer to the oryx, when we see he's in position, we okay. go down and we help him. Okay. okay. So, before our helper arrives by car to our hunted antelope, we still have a while to spot another potential target. Yeah. They are too, too far. They're going out. Okay. They are too far. It's time to go down, cautiously, because the devil doesn't sleep. Indeed, on African soil, 
Homo sapiens is surely not the only predator kin on delicious game. Dashboard. Dashboard. So a herd of oryx has been reduced by one. Local hunters still have about 200 to take, so we won't be much help in reducing the population of this species. And as this antelope is one of the most resistant to harsh conditions, paradoxically, thanks to ongoing drought, it has quickly dominated the local landscape. It was a 300-meter shot, so the shooter should be congratulated. But as local hunters claim, the trick is not to hunt an animal, but to pull it out of the bush. So now our professional hunter clears the way for our car that will drive as close as we can. Nevertheless, we still won't avoid dragging a heavy oryx for a few tens of meters. The men are definitely not thinking about the job yet. Until now, if a prey falls, it was in a place accessible by a vehicle. This time it's not like that. Or maybe it's just for the camera, to pretend it's a kind of adventure. Whatever. After all, it's the unforgettable adventure you travel all the way here. That's why it is so important to plan the picture to the smallest detail and to invite to the photo all the most important people. At the moment, I'm accompanied by the best stalkers on Blaza Farm. I'm standing next to P.H. Jacko and Marcus, the best companion. This time, a method of rapid surprise of game against the wind with a precise shot from a nearby hill turned out to be more effective. Jacko would certainly not be liked as a leader by hunters with poor condition. But Jacek and Karol were all right with this style of hunting. Firstly, because of the results, because today's Oryx is not the first one in this team. And secondly, there's always something going on during a hunt like this. One thinks the same both in Europe and Africa. The pleasure of a hunt ends with pulling the trigger. Then the difficult and often exhausting work begins. The oryx had to be tracked for about 100 meters to the car. 100 meters went pretty smoothly. This team needs a bit more demanding challenge. If it was so easy to pull, then how about going up? One, two, three! Okay, the antelopes pack on the back, so we're ready to go. However, for safety reasons, we walk behind the car. All because of these damned prickly branches. Off-road, they pose even a bigger threat to our eyes. Besides, it's not only because of the branches. Driving a vehicle like that is not easy, especially in such a difficult and unpredictable terrain as the African bush. Here's the icon of off-road car industry, Toyota HZJ, with a diesel engine may look not very impressive, but check its off-road capability and you'll realize that you won't find a better vehicle. On the other hand, it just couldn't go wrong. The hunting was also successful, as the evergreen twig at colleague's hat seems to prove. After such a start, everybody is a bit more relaxed and calmer, but no one is distracted even for a moment. Permanent cautiousness guarantees not only a successful hunt, but first and foremost, safety. And there was a variety of obstacles and problems even after leaving the car. That's why cooperation and helping each other is of great importance. Walking in the bush, one really needs to have the eyes around the head. When we stopped feeling excited and stopped staring at beautiful Namibian landscape, we noticed that there's nothing like a so-called 
mid-forest meadow, just a never-ending bush all around. After some time, we started to miss our deciduous forests, green grass and almost endless fields. We walked briskly through dried bush, stopping every now and then for careful observation of the area. We tried to work out how they find their way in this rather monotonous landscape. There are some landmarks, such as hills or a few windmills, but moving through such a wild area without a satellite navigation makes us Europeans feel quite uneasy. But we might soon feel even worse for a different reason. The sun slowly sets, so it's about to get colder and darker. Now we are going through a waterhole area. There's no shooting, of course, it's a neutral zone. Anyone or anything can drink here in peace. If we were here to only observe the local animals, this place would be perfect. On the other hand, human-built industrial elements spoil a bit the idyllic views. Well, but there's no other way to help the local animals. After a short ride, we went along the beaten track. A standard procedure, to be precise. We are again at the foot of a hill, which spells climbing and scanning the terrain. If there's anything, we shoot. Or approach closer, if it's too far away. There's no third option. Well, unless there's no game out there. Then probably we'll go to another hill. There's plenty of them around here and they don't create breathtaking scenery but quite opposite to the view from the top of them just before sunset. It certainly takes your breath away. Unfortunately, the beautiful landscapes don't guarantee beautiful trophies hanging around and waiting for hunters. Hunting in Africa is not a simple thing. Three kilometers up, three kilometers down, as American paratroopers said before going airborne. Maybe it's not three kilometers, but climbing up and down a few times a day, and we have our little Mount Everest. Well, actually, more like Mount Kilimanjaro. An additional attraction of climbing all these rocks is that they are full of snake dens. Various reptiles use the gaps between the rocks and try to overwinter there. So we leave it with no regrets and move on. It's time to get back to the base. The visibility is still very good. So if there's an opportunity to hunt on our way back, we're surely going to take advantage of that. Such a chance in Namibian mountains can come very quickly and unexpectedly. Right now, Carol is hunting baboons. This is not hunting for meat, but the reduction of one of the biggest pests in the area. Baboons damage all the infrastructure necessary for other animals, and they do it permanently. Take these ones on the left, on the left. On the left? Yes, there, at the top, where they're going oh. over. They have a time where they stop. Ah, the... Yes. Unfortunately, an uphill shot at a distance of 400 meters is not so easy. This time, it's really the end. It got so dark that we had to turn on the lights. It's time we speed things up and move towards our loggia. Back home, it quickly became obvious that fatigue always comes the moment you return. As long as you hunt, adrenaline rush makes you not feel tired. But when the body can only afford a little rest, it immediately takes the opportunity. 
a dinner among a group of hunters and their guides is a perfect place to relax after a long day. A day full of attractions and above all impressions from our first African hunting trip. A trip in a company of great friends, with whom now at the table we can share the thrills of the hunt. Mr. Reporter is also not idle and promotes among Namibian hunters our Euro Hunters program. Or let them know what they're taking part in.